I'd like to tell a sweet little story that happened this last week, but let me begin with these beautiful words from the 107th Psalm, verses 1 and 2. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. A testimony is such a powerful thing. It's good for the person who's telling it. It's good for the people who are listening. And we should recount in our own hearts and, and to our friends and acquaintances what the Lord has done for us. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. The world's not afraid to say so. They'll tell you whatever's going on in their lives. They've got whole television programs committed to just having people yak about their lives. We should be telling people how good God is and how uh, kind he's been to us and how generous and how he's been there for us in the tough times of life. Well, let me tell my little story. I have been given a large supply of school sports uniforms, football, baseball, basketball, home colors, away colors, you name it. 15 boxes fill the back of my pickup truck. And I had found a little school Christian school getting started in a poor part of town down on the coast of Mississippi, and uh, they were eager to get these uniforms. There was also a ministry there that had a little reading center for the poorest children to come in and hear Bible stories. And so a friend of mine who's been very generous in donating King of Glory Bible story books, I was able to take a whole case of those down to give to each of the families in this community. And I said to my wife, it was kind of a sudden thing, why don't you come with me? And so she was up for it and climbed in the truck and away we went. And it's about a four hour drive down to the coast. So when we got there, uh, we were there just in time that evening to have a, a lovely meal, a seafood meal at a waterfront restaurant overlooking Biloxi Harbor and the marina there. And it was just a beautiful time. We enjoyed the food, enjoyed the scenery, enjoyed being with each other in just a relaxed environment. It was just lovely. And a beautiful sunset that night, nice fluffy clouds. It was really quite lovely. Well, afterwards we came down and, and I said, let's go for a little trip around the marina. And so I have a little wheelchair and uh, Louise and I were able to go around the, where the boats were at the marina. And as we were coming back, there was a man standing and he was having a smoke. And so I came up to him and I said, beautiful evening, isn't it, sir? And he said, yes, it is. And then he said, do you see that um, post in the middle of the channel? We were standing on the mainland and looking across to an out island, a barrier island, and halfway across the channel, there was a post in the water. He said, that post saved my life. I said, it did. I said, tell me about it. He said, well, I was 17 years of age and uh, my brother and I were standing up on that concrete spot there uh, by the marina and we dove off and we were going to swim across to the island. And what we didn't realize was this dramatic undertow in this channel and it was pulling me away and I was going to drown. And if it wasn't for that post, I was able to grab onto it. If it wasn't for that post, I wouldn't be here today. His name was Tommy. And I said, well, Tommy, God has been very good to you. And he said, yeah, and he saved my soul too. I said, he did? Tell us the story. He said, well, one night I came home drunk and I gave my wife a rough time and I was breaking things and she called the police and I got arrested and ended up in jail. And when I came home, she was very unhappy. And she said, I've been looking around and there's a little church down the way here and they're having a revival service and I want you to go with me. Well, he said, I didn't want to go. And I said, well, I got nothing to, nothing to wear to go to church. She said, I'll go buy you something. He said, I only wore blue jeans. She bought me a new pair of blue jeans. And so I reluctantly went out. And he said, you know that meeting? That preacher spent the whole hour just talking about my life. He just exposed my whole life to the whole crowd. <laughs> and he said, uh, at the end, 
everybody stood up to sing the closing hymn and and he said I, I was holding the hymn book and and then he choked up and he couldn't he couldn't finish and finally he said I, I think I think the Holy Spirit knocked the hymn book out of my hand and he said somebody bumped me out into the aisle and he said I made my way to the front and I fell on my knees and I asked God to save me and he patted his little pack of cigarettes in his pocket he said I'm not perfect but he said Jesus is <laughs> what a testimony I said I've got I've got one of these nice little pens these little Bible verse pens a Nahum 1 7 the Lord is good a stronghold in the day of trouble and he knows those who trust in him I said I've got some in the truck I want to get you some so I went over to the truck and I got a couple I thought it's always nice to give an extra one and encourage them to give it away to someone else too and so we went back with the two pens and I also had a gospel CD and uh and when I got there, his friend was already there. I said, I, I was going to give you one to give to your friend, but here he is right now. And so it was that that uh, he said he too was a Christian. I, I'm not sure I didn't hear his testimony, but what a thrill. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. How the Lord had rescued him, not only physically saved him from drowning, but then had saved his soul. And he told us later how God had repaired his marriage and and both he and his wife had trusted the Lord. Pray for Tommy. Pray for his wife. Pray for that friend. And for all those out in the storms of life, in the difficulties of life. Ladies and gentlemen, don't judge people by the outside. Don't be put off by a tattoo or a body piercing. Man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. And here was a man who by his own confession had been saved by the grace of God, was going to be in heaven someday. He was my brother. And uh, we prayed together, we fellowshiped together, and I just was so grateful for the opportunity that evening to see God had been at work in that dear man's heart, and God can do the work in the hearts of people we love who aren't saved yet. May God help us to lay hold of him because he is good and his mercy endures forever.